Hello and welcome to our next tutorial on FPGA design using Vivado. So in the previous two tutorial, we have seen very simple design of both uh, combinational logic as well as sequential logic using Vivado and Velo HDL. So in this tutorial, we are going to attempt a little bit more complex design, which will combine the concepts from both combinational as well as sequential and maybe we can design some circuit which is of a bit better use than the running LED. So we are trying to design a very simple voting machine. Okay, so this is the uh, architecture of the oral voting machine we are trying to design. This machine can be used for competition between four candidates. Now there are four buttons which can be used for casting votes for each candidate then there is a reset button which will reset the overall system and then there is one more slide switch here which will set the mode of the voting machine so let me try to explain what it is so basically this machine has two modes okay yeah, if you put it in the voting mode you can actually cast the vote so before you start voting the machine should be configured to voting mode and the the people who are casting vote they can come and press the button against each candidate and the machine will store the vote casted against each candidate now once the voting is over to check the result this mode button should be changed to result mode say and after that when you press each button here the machine is going to display the vote received by the corresponding candidate okay so this button will be deciding whether you are using the machine for voting or whether you are using the machine to check how much vote each candidate received now if you press the reset the machine will erase all the votes against every candidate and everyone will have zero votes so that you can reuse the machine so it may look like a very dumb machine but uh, at least we can start from this machine and maybe build more complex one so basically it doesn't make sense to have the reset button and the mode button on the same machine so practically in electronic voting machine usually these controls will be sitting on a separate port say which will be interfaced with this port and only specified people will be able to reset or change the mode so those who are casting vote they will have access only to these buttons and they just come and press the button to cast their vote okay so it has a display also so during vote casting when you successfully cast a vote when you successfully press the button it may display like you successfully casted your vote and when you are checking the result the display will actually display how much vote each candidate received when you press the curse voting button now we are trying to prototype this voting machine using our z board okay so let me keep them side by side so we are going to use these four push buttons to represent these four buttons okay so that is one of the reasons why we are restricting to four candidates if you have more push buttons maybe we can have a more number of candidates for our voting machine and the button on the middle here this will be used as the reset button okay and one of the dip switches here may be dip switch zero we will use it for the mode and for display we actually have a OLED display on the board but using OLED is more complicated we will see it later for the time being we are going to use the leds for displaying the results also so what should happen is when you cast the vote if you successfully cast your vote this leds all of them should blink for say one second to tell you that you successfully casted your vote now when you are checking the result this led will show the total number of votes received by a candidate when you press the corresponding push button since we have only eight LEDs, that means we have a uh, additional constraint here. That is the maximum number of votes 
that can be received by a candidate is 255 because that's the maximum number of now the largest number you can display using eight led so that's an extra constraint here which is not present here maybe later we can move to the OLED so that we can remove all this constraint okay so i hope uh, requirement is clear to you now you can you can already see this requires a bunch of counters things like that that will make uh, this a, a sequential circuit you definitely need a clock signal for designing this circuit so this cannot be purely combinational circuit this has to be a sequential circuit now we will follow hierarchical design approach for this one that means we will be designing our uh, parts of the voting machine separately and finally we will combine them all together to build our final voting machine so i'm going and uh, starting a new vivado project to do this so let me call it voting machine remember to check this option create sub project directory actually rtl project no file no constraint boards is a board next and finish now the circ first circuit i'm going to design is the circuit uh, used for casting vote okay so following our previous discussion on running led if you use a 100 megahertz clock at which our z board is running and if you check whether this button is pressed or not a single button press for one second will cast you know one megahertz okay so that's not what we need so we need to specify how long a button should be pressed so that it will be accepted as a proper vote or a proper press so as a designer you can define it so here i am going to define the time period as one second that means only if you press this button for one second it will be taken as a real press any press less than one second will be ignored same way if i keep on pressing the button the candidate should not get more and more votes actually okay it doesn't matter how long i press the button if i press it for longer than one second it should be counted as one vote. and the the uh, the longer he presses there is no effect once the vote is casted that's it only once he remove his finger and press again the next vote will be taken by the machine so that's the requirement so i'm going to design that small circuit which is going to control this one okay so i'm creating a new file and let me call it uh, let me call it button control simply So button control logic, it basically has an input coming from the button and it will check how long the button is pressed. If it is pressed for more than one second, it will create a single output pulse indicating a successful vote is casted. Okay. And it won't create additional pulses even if the button is kept on pressing for more than a second so that's the requirement okay so of course it needs a clock signal to do all these things input clock let's say input button output valid vote so from external world this is how that logic looks like okay uh, it gets an input from the button and it gives an output called valid vote if a successful vote is casted. Let's also take a reset signal to initialize the signals. Okay. Now the logic will look similar to what we wrote last time. So of course we need a counter and the counter should count until uh, we reach one second and once we reach one second this signal should go high 
that also exactly for one clock pulse so last time we have already seen uh, at 100 megahertz if you want to measure one second we need a 31 bit counter so we'll say reg 31 down to zero let's call it count now one difference from the previous design is in the previous design for running led this was a free running counter the counter will start from zero it will go all the way up to uh, i guess it was so it was uh, one second so it was one second divided by the period of our clock which was 10 millisecond which will give you one followed by eight zeros okay so it was like counter will always start from zero it will go up to 10 to r of eight then it will reset to zero then again go till 10 to r of eight so on and so forth so it was more like a free running counter but here the requirement is different okay here we are using the counter to check whether somebody has pressed the button for more than a second okay that simply means the counter should increment only when this input is high if this input is low the counter should not increment and it should reset back to zero so how does that logic look like always add to postage clock okay let's add a reset signal here if reset counter is zero so initially if we press the reset button counter starts from zero else begin and if button is pressed if button which is same as writing if button equal to equal to one if button and counter is less than one one two three four five six seven eight okay so i will tell you the logic why i am using this weird looking number i am supposed to check till 10 to hour of eight but i am doing 10 to hour of eight plus one I, I will explain the reason shortly i will increment the count counter is counter plus one else if not button that means as soon as you remove your finger from the button you release the button counter will be reset back to zero this is my logic now why i am adding this condition here now suppose if you don't add this condition you press the button the counter increments and it reaches 10 to hour of 8 but if you don't have this condition the counter will keep on incrementing it will reach the maximum value for 31 we are supposed to put 31 bit counter it will reach the maximum value to 2 hour of 31 minus 1 then it will overflow to 0 and again starts from 0 so it is possible that if you keep on pressing the counter overflows and it may create problem we may take one long button press as multiple votes that is one reason i have to add this condition here now why i didn't add 10 to r of 8 instead of that why i added 10 to r of 8 plus 1 will be clear to you when i write my next always block okay so this is the always block which will basically create this output valid vote whether my vote is a valid vote or not okay so if again reset initially i'm setting this signal to zero else begin and if counter equal to equal to
Okay, so my requirement is if I press for one second, I need a single pulse. So this signal should remain high for a single clock pulse. So that's my requirement. Now that's exactly why I put this condition here. Okay, so if I keep on pressing, my counter will reach 10 to the power of 8. So on the next clock cycle, this condition will be satisfied. My valid vote will become high. Okay, so this signal goes high. And on the next clock cycle, it reaches this value. And once it reaches this value, what happens? This condition is no longer true. This pulse or these signals become zero. So I'll be getting exactly one pulse if I put this condition. Now instead, if I keep this condition, if I keep on pressing, the counter will reach this value. After that, it will not increment and it will remain at this value, okay? So because of that, what happens here? My valid word will remain high as long as I remove the finger because the counter is stuck at this particular value. So this signal remain high forever until the counter value is something other than this. And that will happen only when I release the button. Okay, so that's why the reason I put this value here. Now, you can use other logic also to achieve this. This is one of the possible logic. There can be other ways also to achieve exactly the same effect. Now, uh, this is giving error here because valid is inside always block, so we need to declare it as output reg valid out. Okay. So this part is done, valid vote. So this part is basically for each button. Okay, so we need this logic for each button. I press one button, it will create a valid vote if I keep it pressed for more than one second. Okay, now let's write the logic for storing how much vote each candidate received. So that will write, we'll write it as a separate module. Okay, so I'm going here and adding a new file, create file. So let me call it uh, vote logger.v, something like that. Okay, okay, okay. So you can see vote logger here, next wait log file. And as I mentioned last time, button control has a triangle here and it is also in bold. That means this is the top module now in your project. If you go and synthesis, Vivado is going to build this circuit. He's not going to build this one. He will simply ignore this one. Now, if you want to make this as the top module, or if you want to implement this circuit, you need to right click and say set, of, set as top. Now your top module is this one. Now if you click synthesis, he's going to build the circuit. So of course there's nothing inside the circuit now. So let's add our logic here. So here also we need input clock. We have input reset. Now what this circuit does is it simply stores the vote received by a particular candidate. Okay. Now I can make for separate logger for each candidate or I can make a single logger for all four candidates. Both are possible. Then you can combine them together. Okay, so to keep some things simpler, let's use a simple single logger for logging the vote for all four candidates. Okay, so I have Four candidates, so you can either type like input uh, candidate one vote valid, candidate two vote valid, etc. Or you can declare it as an array of size four, both are fine. Let me write them as a separate signal. Okay, so this signal is basically indicating candidate one received a valid vote. From where this will come? This will come from here later. Okay, we have to connect them together. Now candidate one vote valid, candidate two vote valid, candidate three vote valid, candidate four vote valid. 
Okay, now the logger it also gives output 7 down to 0. This output basically tells how much vote each candidate currently received. Okay, so let me call it cant1 vote received candidate. Two vote received, candidate three, and it four. Okay, by the way, if you want to copy paste the same line in Vivado, you can press Ctrl D on your keyboard, it will just replicate the current line, which is a shortcut for copy paste. So, this signal will say how much vote candidate one received, this is candidate two, this is candidate three, this is candidate four. Now, the size I am making it 8 bit because of our restriction on zinc. On so not thing on the Z board because this information will be finally going to the LEDs. So as I mentioned before, one candidate can get a maximum of 255 because we have only eight LEDs. That's why I declared them eight volt. Okay. Now let's try to write the logic. So here logic is pretty simple. So always add uh, for search clock begin and now if reset if the system is reset the vote received by every candidate should be zero okay candidate one candidate two candidate three candidate four so they are all inside always block so we need to make them reg type Now instead of doing like that, it's also possible to declare four counters inside the module, then later connect those four counters to the output ports. That's also perfectly fine. In that case, you will have this reg declaration part here, and you have separate output, and you will say candidate one vote received equal to candidate one vote counter or something like that. That's also perfectly fine. Okay, else begin sorry begin and now what is the condition for incrementing candidate one vote if this signal is high if candidate one vote valid candidate one vote received will increment by one so same logic for all four candidates can simply copy pasting but remember to change these values here this is candidate two candidate two candidate two candidate three Candidate 3, Candidate 3, Candidate 4, Candidate 4, Candidate 4. So this one is extra, we can remove it. Okay, now instead of if, if, but right, else if, else if, else if. So you can see there is some kind of priority here. That means if candidate 1 vote valid and candidate 2 vote valid comes at the same time on the same clock, the candidate 1 vote will increment and candidate 2 vote will not increment. And this case shouldn't be happening practically because only one of the candidates should be getting a particular vote at a particular given time. So you don't have to worry about it. Only one of them will be true at a given point of time. Even if two candidates get vote at the same time, so there is a priority. If you press two button exactly at the same time, if you can really do it, then candidate one will get the vote, candidate two won't get it because this has higher priority over this. Because in, in hardware implementation, this will implement a priority decoder. And in priority decoder, uh, whichever condition is written first, it has higher preference, higher precedence over the subsequent conditions okay fine so we have designed 
two parts of our circuit. Now let's try to combine them. So what I'm going to do is I will write one more module, the top module, which will basically instantiate, okay, which will basically combine these two modules into a larger module. So I'm writing a new module. This is my top module, the highest hierarchy. I'm going to call it the voting machine dot V. Even if you don't write dot V, it will be automatically added. Okay, so this is the topmost module. Okay, so I know even from the picture, what are the input, what are the output, I clearly know. So my inputs are input clock, input reset, input mode, input, okay, let's call button one, button two, button three, button four. Again, you can either declare them separately or you can declare an array of four. Now output, okay, LEDs also. You can either declare eight LEDs separately or you can simply declare as an array. It's not down to zero. So, so this is my view of my voting machine. I have clock, I have reset, I have mode, I have four buttons, and I have the LED. Fine. Now let's try to combine things. So I'm, I'm taking my button control and I'm going to instantiate it inside this top module. Okay. So I'm calling it button control and I'm going to instantiate the first button control for this button. So this is the syntax name of the module followed by instance name. So let me call it button control one, VC one, then the port mapping. Okay, so you need to do dot followed by the actual port name. We call it the actual port. And within the bracket, you need to say the formal port or where this port should be connected. Okay, so clock is, of course, this clock. So this clock is coming from the top module. That clock gets connected to this clock. This reset gets connected to this reset this button so i'm writing for the first button so button one i'm connecting here and valid vote okay it is not going to the top module so let me connect it to a wire okay so this is the other data type in with lock registers and wires so this output coming from the button control gets connected to a wire called uh, valid vote one so we have four buttons so we need four button control so you can simply copy paste it four times or you can use the generate statement which we discussed last semester generate statement in with either one of them so this is second button control so remember each instance should have a unique name so if it is bc1 call this some other thing otherwise it's a syntax error so clock and reset remain same this one is button 2 where it vote 2 this is bc3 button 3 while it vote uh, 3 okay 1 2 3 4 this is 4 this is 4 this is 4 so same way we need to declare for wires also one two three four okay now save the file when you save the file look at the design sources here okay so this is your voting machine now you can see there is an option to expand it if you expand it you will see there are four button controls instantiated under the voting machine this is again one good feature of what we want to compare to quarters it can automatically analyze as soon as you save the file it analyzes the hierarchy of your design and he automatically finds out 
what is the hierarchy of your design so he's saying this module is a top module and these four modules are under this top module and this word logger is uh, standing independently now we can also we can instantiate that module also that's what i'm going to do next okay and we were if you are seeing something blue that means that signal is not declared so valid vote for instead of that i wrote here valid vote 41 so make it vote for that means the blue color goes away again we want to it analyzes your code at at uh, statically that means when you're entering the code at the same time he's analyzing your code that's why he's able to tell you syntax error and warnings at that time itself okay now what logger let me bring the what logger here and try to instantiate it okay so what logger module name let me call the instant name as vl clock reset candidate one valid candidate two valid candidate three valid clock you can connect to the same clock source reset same reset now candidate one vote valid is coming from button control one valid vote one so i'm going to take this wire and i'm going to put it here okay so if i press button one for one second this signal will go high for one clock that is basically coming to this signal and inside the logger if this signal is high, candidate one vote increments by one. Okay, that's why this signal should be high exactly for one clock pulse. If it remains high for two clock pulse, for one button press, you will get two votes to that candidate. It shouldn't happen. So valid vote one, valid vote two, vote three, and four. Okay. Now this part is also done. So how much vote each candidate received is coming here. Now this information should be finally going to the LED. Okay. Now when it will go to the LED, that depends upon the mode. Only when the mode is in result mode, this result should go to the LED. If it is in the voting mode, it shouldn't go to the LED. Okay. Instead, if I press the button sufficiently long, all the LEDs should glow for one second. So that begs for next part of our circuit. We'll have to design it. You can write the code either directly inside this or you can write it separately. So I'll prefer again to write it as a separate module. Now let me go ahead and save my file and when I save the file you can immediately see what logger came under voting machine. So again you can see the hierarchy here. But remember the triangle is still here. That means if you are synthesizing your design it is going to synthesize the vote logger not the voting machine. So we'll go ahead and right click and say this is my top. Okay. This is my top. Now let me add a new file. Add or create the design. So let me call it as mode control. Okay, this is the module which is going to control the mode, and this is the guy who is actually going to control my LEDs. Okay, so let's try to design that. Mode control. Smart control, it will also have an input uh, clock, input reset. Now, 
input mode of course and he's the one who is going to control the leds as i mentioned so that's what my plan so when he has to control the led he need to check what is the mode and based on what is the mode he has to decide whether the candidate vote should go as the output or whether he has to simply make the leds high for one clock pulse uh, one second actually if a successful vote is casted okay so to do that he need to know what casted okay let me call it valid what cast so i'm going to say this signal will go high if one of the candidates gets a valid vote okay either candidate one two or three three or four if one of them gets a valid vote this signal is going to high that is my assumption if that happens he should make the leds high for one clock now other inputs are used for sending the vote received by each candidate if it is in the count mode or result mode okay candidate one votes vote candidate two vote candidate three vote candidate four okay so let's try to decide so let me say and of course his outputs are the led so output let me again call seven down to zero LED. LEDs. let me say always at uh, such clock can end okay. if reset leds so at the beginning or oh, whenever i press reset button all leds become zero so it is inside always block so of course this should be right type else let's say begin end let's say if mode equal to equal to zero okay so mode zero is my say voting mode mode one is my result mode okay that's how i'm going to define it mode zero is voting and the slide switch is off we are in voting mode and the slide switch is on we are in the result mode okay so else so voting mode my requirement is if the signal become high leds should stay high for one second okay that logic is very similar to what we wrote before so i can say if mode equal to equal to zero and if valid vote is casted okay what should i do i need to make this leds there are eight of them so you can either write eight tick hexadecimal ff or eight tick binary all ones or simply 255 all of them will work now if we if i simply write this much the problem is as soon as a vote is casted leds become high and they remain high so i need to put one more condition how long they should remain high so they should remain high for one second so that means i need a counter again so i need a counter again for counting one second so we know we need 31 bit counter always set or such clock begin and if reset counter zero now when this counter should start counting this counter should start counting when a valid vote is casted okay and it should count till one second then it should stop that is my requirement Okay. 
So else if so again you can use whatever logic you want. So I'm using uh, one of the logic. If this signal is high, I will say counter is counter plus one. If this signal become high, and my assumption is that signal will remain high only for one clock cycle. So initially counter was zero. When I press the reset, when I casted a vote, counter became one. Now once it becomes one, okay, else if counter not equal to zero and counter is less than two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll say counter, second counter plus one. Else counter. This may look a weird logic, so this is what I'm going to do. Whenever, whenever reset is pressed, counter starts from zero. Okay. If a valid vote is casted, counter becomes one. Why? Because my assumption is this signal will remain high only for one clock cycle. Okay. If it is high for one clock cycle, counter was zero because of reset and this signal will make it to increment by one and it will become one. And on the next clock cycle, reset is not there, so this is false. This signal is not there because its, it's period is only one cycle, so this doesn't happen. And we come to this case, and here counter is not equal to zero because this condition made it one, and counter is less than this big value. Because of that, the counter will start incrementing, and the counter keep on incrementing until it reaches this value. So that will create a one second delay. And on the next clock, this is false, this is false, this is false because counter has reached this value. Then you come here and counter goes back to zero. So that's the logic I'm going to use. If a valid vote is casted, counter becomes one. If counter is not zero, increment it till 100. Okay, once counter becomes reset it to zero. Okay, so look at the code and give a thought about it, how this logic may work and uh, try to do it. So here I'm going to write it like that. If mode is zero and valid word caster. Now I can remove that condition now. I can because because this signal is already taken care by the counter logic here. So this is actually not needed. I can simply write if mode is zero and if counter is counter is greater than zero because the counter should be started and Okay, I guess uh, greater than zero is enough. Yeah. Because greater than zero condition will happen when valid vote casted comes. And the counter will remain greater than zero until it reaches this value. Then it goes back to zero. So this much is enough. If mode is zero and counter greater than zero, LED remains high. Else LED is goes back to zero. Okay, looks good. Okay, 
so if you if i simply write it that means any condition other than that that means even mode equal to equal to one also this should be the case so let me slightly modify it if mode equal to zero counter else if mode equal to zero and counter equal to zero that is the implicit meaning here then it is become zero because we have another case here else if mode equal to equal to one which is our result mode now i am in result mode in result mode what should happen in result mode i need to check which button is pressed here and i should display the corresponding vote of that candidate on the output okay so i need to know which button is pressed so i also need to get those inputs so i need to also know candidate one button press candidate two button press candidate three button press candidate four button press then only i can do it if candidate one button press leds should have candidate one vote now we can replicate the same logic okay else if candidate two button press leds candidate two vote else if candidate three button press candidate three vote else if candidate four button press ladies candidate for what if you wish you can add an else case and say all leds are zero if, if none of the buttons are pressed but it's really not required this is enough okay so if if reset comes leds are zero if you are in mode zero which is more voting mode and if my counter is not zero if it is greater than zero i will make the LEDs to glow and when the counter off flows to zero I will turn the LEDs off that's the logic here now if you are in result mode I will check which button is pressed and based on which button is pressed I will, I will pass the corresponding votes to the output LED now remember we look there is a rule you can use a variable on the left hand side of an always block inside a single always block that's why you cannot separate this part and this part into two always blocks in that case you will have this led signal on the left hand side of the assignment operator inside two always blocks which is illegal for synthesizable code so you you should write all the leds inside the single always block okay so it looks fine at this point of time and now let me take this logic and put it here my mode control okay so it's called mc so the clock signal is again the same clock reset is again same reset this mode is coming from here where it was casted we will generate it at this point leave it empty candidate one vote okay which is same as this signal coming from vote logger so let me take it from here and put it in the bracket here and uh, put it here and declare it here 
bit wire because it's 8 bit wide. 0 candidate 1 vote, 2 vote, 3 vote, 4 vote. So candidate 1 vote there. So candidate 2 vote here. Candidate 3 vote here. Candidate 4 vote here. Now candidate 1 whether a valid button press is done that logic we already have from our button press logic so this valid vote one is is basically saying the button is pressed for more than one second okay so we can use the same signal not only in the logger in this mode control also because that signal is going to become high for one clock pulse if if this corresponding button is pressed for one second or more than one second okay so same logic will work valid vote one valid vote two valid vote three and valid vote four and these are the LEDs. Now these LEDs should be connected to the top LED. Now don't declare them reg type. Okay, so any signal connected to the output of an instantiated module shouldn't be reg type. It should be wire type. That's the rule. So this should be wire type. That means you don't write anything here or you can explicitly write wire for the same. So don't write right there. So this LED get connected here. Now the only thing that is missing here is valid word casted. My assumption was this signal will become high if either candidate 1, 2, 3 or 4 receives a valid word. That is my requirement. If any of them receives a valid word, this signal should go high. Okay. Now, how can I do it? It is pretty straightforward. So this signal indicates candidate one received a valid vote. This one, candidate two received a valid vote. So basically you OR, do an OR operation on these four signals. And that means if any of them become high, this signal become high. Now that you can uh, do separately here and assign that to a wire, or you can directly do the OR operation in the bracket itself. So let me do it separately here. Wire, and let me call the wire any valid vote, something like that. And I can say assign any valid vote is valid vote one or valid vote two or valid vote three or valid vote. That means if any of them gets a valid vote, this signal will go high. And that will start the counter inside the logic, which will make the LEDs to stay high for one clock cycle. Okay. Now, there are no syntax error at this point of time. Again, I am not going to simulate my circuit. One reason is there are there are a lot of things here which works at one second now if you want to simulate uh, one second a, a clock period of a wall clock time of one second using a simulator it will take several minutes or maybe 30 minutes of simulation time so i don't want to waste my time i hope all my logic is right if not we will run it on the board and try to debug at that point of time so i'm i'm directly going and running synthesis assuming everything that i have done is correct okay my synthesis is completed now as usual we will go ahead and do the pin assignment 
so let's assign the LEDs first so they are P22 P21 22 P21 P22 22 19 and you put so here i have my buttons so i'm assigning the top button for candidate one which is t18 right one is candidate two I am calling R18 bottom one for candidate 3 R16 left one for candidate 4 and 15 T18 R18 R16 and N15 okay clock signal I remember it is Y9N on this board if you don't remember check the data sheet mode i am going to use the first light switch which is f22 and reset i am going to use the center push button which is p16 okay also remember to change the io standard we will use all of them lvc was 18 All of them LVC was 18. So even if it is given as default, you should manually change them to LVC was 18. Otherwise, during bit gen, you will get an error. Okay, so constraint file porting machine.xdc file is saved. You will also give the clock constraint. So at the timing constraint at clock clock name is clock so this is also clock and okay check back the constraint save everything okay constraint okay it seems like everything is updated now go ahead and generate the bit stream the synthesis is out of date Force update and generate with string. So, when I tried to run the design on the board, first time it was running only partially. So, I recheck my code and there was some silly mistake. Okay, so let's correct them. So, first one was uh, we created this signal which will become high if I press any of the buttons for more than one second. So we created the signal but I forgot to connect it. So that signal, any valid vote should be actually connected to valid vote caster to this one. That was one mistake that I did. Second one again was a copy paste issue. For example, here on button control 3, I connected button 4 instead of button 3. So when I press button 3, nothing was happening. So that was another issue. So we need to correct that. And the final one was in what logger. Here, I was not considering the mode option. So it was written like if candidate one vote valid, candidate one vote received increment by one. Now here the problem is if I am in counting mode, 
I need to press the same button to check how much vote this particular guy got. Now that button press was also counted as a new vote, which is problematic. So I need to increment the vote received only when we are in mode zero. We should not increment it when we are in mode one. So I need to add this port to vote logger and put this condition equal to zero everywhere. And in voting machine in the top module, I need to add that port and connect this. Okay, that's it. Once this much is done, um, pretty much the design is running. So let's see it. I am programming the port now. Now the board is programmed. You can see the blue LED here. So First of all, I am resetting the board by pressing the reset button here. Okay. And I am configuring my board in voting mode first. So we have these light switches. This one was used as the mode button, mode switch. So I am putting it in position 0, off position, down position, which is 0. Okay. Now we are in voting mode, so we can cast some vote. So this is candidate one, the one at top. So let me press it and you will see when I press longer than one second, the LED is closed for one second. That's it. Now I can release. So candidate one has one vote now. Let me vote for same guy. Okay, he has three or two votes. Let's vote once more. Okay, once more. So candidate one, he got four votes. Remember, candidate two, one, two, three. This is candidate three, one, two, and candidate four, one. Okay, so let's assume voting is over. You need to check the result. So I'm changing the mode to one, which is for checking the result. I'm pressing the same button once more, and you can say it's displaying four candidate one. Okay, candidate two, uh, three, candidate three, two. And final candidate one. Okay. In this case, even if you remove remove your finger, the LED remain on because in our program we didn't add the code for making the LED zero if none of the buttons are pressed. So if you add that option, uh, you will see how many votes one particular guy got only when you keep pressing the button. Once you remove it, the LED will turn off. So that option you can add easily. Okay, so that's it. I hope uh, you understood the code and you will try it yourself and uh, you will get back to me if you have any doubts. Thank you.